good morning everyone in the last three videos i think one demo class i have taken but nothing we discussed on that demo class so sample just we will go through uh, with one small type so for 10 to 15 minutes okay uh, good morning everyone so welcome to durga soft online training myself k prakash babu having 14 years of experience as a trainer so the title of this course is nothing but the core and advanced python we are going to learn both the core and advanced python the duration of the course is nothing but the duration of this course is nothing but so two months two months around feb and make sure sir the timings of this session is not at 10 o'clock the timings of this class is from 11 a.m to 12 15 in the noon okay so just only demos we are taking at 10 o'clock okay only demos we are taking at 10 o'clock so the fees for this batch is 5000 okay the fees for this batch is nothing but so 5000 okay including uh, materials video recordings everyone you are going to get okay so next and after that uh the days regular classes will be there from monday to friday sir some special classes maybe two weeks i'm going to take special classes okay that will be there on saturday so around two hours because uh, we have some special topics are there which has to be finished at a stretch so easy topics so those topics i'm going to plan for saturday okay so around three saturdays i will take so for two hours duration to finish that easy topics okay of course you can enjoy that sessions because of some real time experience you people are going to get and this is nothing but the contact number for registration purpose you can contact to this number or to this mail id to get registration and uh, sir demos already we have taken one demo on friday so this is nothing but a monday today also a demo will be there so tomorrow also demo will be there and from wednesday onwards you are going to get the regular class and this is the syllabus which i explained in the last video like first we are going to talk about intro introduction to python next and after that so to write python program what are the fundamentals required like the keywords identifiers so how to define keyword i mean how to define identifiers what rules are there variable means what object means what all these terminologies we are going to discuss in this session okay python fundamentals then whenever you are writing the program whether it is a normal program or big program compulsory if you write a program it has to take some inputs right compulsory it is going to take some inputs and a compulsory it is going to produce at least one output that is the reason why we are writing the program so are there for taking maybe from the user you can take or from the file you can take or from the database you can take even in the writing also we have three different stages that there but to deal with them, these things compulsory you required input and output statement how to read the data from the user how to write uh, i mean how to read the data from the user and you are supplying that input to this program and the program will generate some output how to distribute that output so these things we are going to cover in this input and output state suppose consider i'm reading age of the person okay i am reading age after reading age of the person my requirement is nothing but eligible for marriage or not or you are able for what art or your application is going to be processed or not because for government examinations or for those things age criteria is very very important like that if you want to see there are two things are there in this the first case is nothing but what type of data your age is Sir, age will be there like 22.3974 like this. No. Sir, is there any age like Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, this type of data will come under integer. This kind of data will come under floating point. Like we have to decide the type first. So, that will be discussed in this data types. Of course, strictly speaking, our Python is not having any data type. In other programming languages, we have to take integer something like this. But in Python, simply you can take age is equal to 10 okay 
so automatically based on your allocated data type will be decided so all this a big scenario is there so that we are going to discuss in these data types and second if you see how you are going to compare sir if your age is greater than or equal to 18 you are eligible for vote otherwise not sir have you observed here we are using greater than or equal to. it is an operator which performs some operation so those things will be discussed in the next session around here we are going to spend maximum time we will discuss 20 programming exercises okay how you can able to deal with this all these things minimum 20 exercises we are going to take here and the control flow statements have you observed here we are going to take the data based on some condition we are going to write like what statements are there here eligible for what not eligible for what but these two statements are there in the program so you are going to select this one based on one condition you are going to select this one based on uh, going to be done based on control flow statement okay uh, so we discuss and there are a rich set of data that are there in python in detail about that also we are going to see so maximum you are going to get uh, uh, what you can call uh, maximum you are going to get uh, different types of utilities like uh, how to push the data how to get the data so uh, if, if you take string how to perform various operations like extracting the substring so many algorithms we are going to discuss regarding these data structures okay so after that functional programming modules and packages predefined modules with one small mini project there till 11th chapter the content is about scripting so from 12th chapter onwards we are going to for functional programming it is a type of programming sir it is a type of uh, doing the tasks okay how we are going to do all these things we will explore don't worry and the collection of functions are called as modules and the collection of these modules is called as packages we can create some modules in this style okay and some predefined modules also available anyway today also i am going to explore one or two modules there is one module called math there is one module called random there is one module called array like different different types of modules are existed okay and even we are going to see a small mini project on this object oriented programming we are going to talk okay so it is a beautiful concept of course here i am not mentioning all these things in future we will discuss okay a big project we will we have studied in this object oriented programming that we are going to take and we will analyze how it will work. okay so we are going to see a small mini project on that and this is the very very important so just now i told right reading the data from file writing the data to the file so what operations sir i want to read one character how it is possible i want to read one paragraph how it is possible okay i want to read a single line how it is possible i want to read the total file at a time okay so even in this we are going to talk about uh, binary files also like i have one image file is there i want to copy the content of image file into another image file how you can do that all these things and database related things my sql database i am going to explore for 10 to 15 minutes and python database connectivity pdbc and regular expression how you can able to do validation related programs exception handling multi-threading so patterns okay programs everything we are going to discuss in this okay this is nothing but what we have about our syllabus and even yesterday i mean uh friday we have seen one simple program how to print hello world okay just we have to use print statement within double quotations whatever information you are giving that information will be printed on the screen as it is okay so next and after that addition of two numbers so how to take two numbers from the user we will discuss later but statically i have given two numbers i have calculated addition of these two numbers and we are printing that result on the screen okay like a is equal to a b is equal to b and addition is equal to c like this we are printing so uh, in the last video somewhere i explained within flower brackets whatever content you are taking within flower bracket whatever content you are taking 
so that will be printed as it is on the screen provided if you start with f anyway uh, the people who are attending today as a first session so don't worry i will explain in our regular sessions don't worry but already friday i explained very clearly how this is going to work and how to write a program to generate one time password so that part also we discussed very clearly by taking some random module okay uh, how to generate a random number from this if you run this program multiple times so there is one module is there with the name random in that there is one function is there called rand int this function is going to generate a random number between the given intervals between the given intervals suppose if you are given interval is x and then y compulsory you have to provide two parameters sir it will generate the data so from x to y minus x to y minus suppose if i am giving 10 and then 15 so what will happen it will select the numbers in between so 10 11 so 12 13 14 that's all sir don't consider 15 because i told very clearly in python not only this example in python if you are taking any range of values like this first argument is included okay remember first argument is included what about the second one second argument is nothing but excluded okay we are not going to consider one step before itself we have to stop if it is y y minus so like this we have said so this is nothing but how to generate what if we have seen if you observe here we are using one beautiful module what is random i told right they have prepared one random module they have prepared one random module in these modules so many functions are there so one of the function is nothing but randy of course who has written this function already predefined this that's why we are not required to write any code for this okay right yes please confirm if you are having any queries please let me know if everything is okay then uh, we will go to the next uh, content yes everything is okay but your voice is breaking mm -hmm. your voice is little breaking i think network issue okay okay i will check it once sir i will check it once now is it okay now is okay I will... any other queries please let me know Yeah, please use chart window for communication purpose. If everything is clear, we will go for the next thing. Right. So today we will see some more uh, Python scripts. So next example, so what I'm going to take here is, sir, uh, first I will explain how we can able to execute Python program because some uh, new members are there here. Have a look once. So this is nothing but a simple Python script what we have. Okay, a simple Python script what we have. Second. Yeah, like this. Yeah, so just to go to file and uh, I am selecting Python programming. I will explain how to do this, all these things. Okay. So here I am saving the Python file. Okay. So in C drive, okay, 11 a.m. folder is already there. Let us save the file as test.py. Okay. So now I want to write a small Python program like a print of so welcome, like this. I am taking. Okay. So within double quotations, if you are taking anything. So it will be printed as it is on the screen. So if you are writing anything within double quotations, so that information is going to be printed as it is on the screen. Okay. So and how we use the program instance, we need to go for command prompt. So we have to go. 
and in this command prompt actually we have saved our file in which location so in local yeah now is it okay can you please confirm shilpa right yeah i think there is some network she is there from there okay right so in 11 am folder just we have saved with the name test.py okay so now we have to move to that part in b folder now we are in c colon users some other is there so i need to come out from all these folders cd backslash okay it will come out from all these folders now i am going to take cd space which folder we are in 11a so just we entered into this particular okay check sir okay he will run the program p a space which file name we have given test test.py once if you press enter automatically you can able to see that information we say welcome see the way how we able to print a simple message on the screen okay now to print current month calendar i want to print a current month calendar so for that so python people already introduced one module with name import so import what is that module name here is nothing but a calendar like this there is a predefined module so in this module they have implemented so many functions okay which are used to work with the calendar related things now sir print i am taking so calendar dot okay i am printing calendar dot so month which is going to take two arguments which is going to take two arguments the first argument is nothing but sir which year calendar you required sir i need 2023 calendar and which month sir i want a second month calendar just to save this code just to save this code now while running the program just p by space as usual test dot p by i am giving so you can able to see we got the current month calendar of course how they have implemented is not in our scope as of now like this we can we can utilize the modules which are already existed like this how many modules we have we don't know because so based on our requirement keep on the modules are going to be getting okay so that's why so we don't know how many modules are there so depending on the situation for example if you are doing any mathematical things math module is required suppose if you are doing with the random things random module any additional string handling details if you want you can go with the string module like we have so many modules are there anyway we will discuss all those things later this is nothing sir i don't want month calendar now i want a complete year calendar okay i want a complete year calendar sir uh, maybe some some small kind of disturbance will be there from my side okay because some network issue is there my side I'll try to adjust it today from tomorrow it is going to be resolved okay because um, we shifted the house that's why a small kind of disturbance will be there okay please kindly consider today okay from tomorrow this kind of disturbance won't be there from my side because <laughs> network connection is not established i am using mobile network that's why okay right so now i want a full month calendar then what we have to do so we have same calendar module is there just we have to pass only the year now if you run this program what will happen all months will be displayed all months calendar is going to be displayed you can see here 2023 so january month february month march april may like complete calendar it is going to be displayed so like this just i am trying to tell a uh, predefined support will be there so if you know the basic things then executing will become very easy so that is the reason how we can able to say python is very easy but if you want to do these kind of things in java or other languages first of all this library support we can get only for certain things not for everything 
okay in java and one more thing in java if you want to write a small piece of code also then we need to follow certain rules and regulations like uh, you need main method uh, and object oriented principle should be included in each and every program like that but this one is not required because all our python programs are divided into three categories python programs are divided into not three but in our syllabus we are going to cover three so first one is nothing but what is scripting okay first one is what scripting so second one is nothing but functional programming so third one is nothing but object oriented programming step by step we are going to discuss okay but if you take uh, other things so we have module uh, sorry modular programming is there like we have different kind of strategies are there so because python is providing these many programming languages support there is no proper structure for the program that's why simply importing executing main method such type of things won't be there but if you take functional programming you need to define the function first and then you have to use in the case of object oriented you need to put this function inside another concept like a class so where security will be there if you want to access this data you need object like if you create a format any number of times you can utilize it. okay so that's why for python program there is no proper format sir okay there is no proper format directly we can use no problem at all sir okay now i have one more doubt see uh, we have seen how to write the program and how you can able to calculate addition of two numbers and even random module also so we will take one more example okay so that example that example is going to demonstrate how to work with the math module okay how to work with math module suppose consider i have math module is there i want to calculate factorial of the given okay so print i am taking math dot see uh, in other programming languages we need to write code for so this particular uh, uh, factorial sir like you can write a function to calculate factorial or you can write object oriented programming to calculate factorial so in that we have different methodologies are there like recursion like that but uh, sir we are not required to write any code in python for doing this operation why because we have a predefined module is there like math in that module they have already coded how to find out factorial so just we have to import that math and you need to take so factorial dot sorry factorial of you need to pass any number n any number you can give suppose if i am giving n value as a 5 if we execute this program what will happen it is going to print factorial of 5 sir if you want you can see what is the 5 factorial we are getting 120 okay so suppose i want to give some 10 i need to get a 10 factorial let us see how it is going to work you can see this is nothing but 10 factorial okay like that we can write a program okay by using this scripts undertaking predefined libraries okay yes can you please confirm up to this do you have any doubts is it clear clear up to this right and one more confirmation can you please confirm at least now is the network is better yeah so please please ignore this problem sir because i told already from tomorrow this problem won't be there okay right sir now um just i think maximum uh, i have given the introduction to python that is how easy python is now we will enter into the syllabus so i i'm i want to talk about introduction regarding python sir introduction to python sir who invented python 
how this python name came like that i want to talk sir who introduced python there is one special person is there with name gudio van okay gudio van ros okay gudio van ros so he is the founder of python sir. okay he is nothing but founder of python at very initial stages he is struggling with one math project sir okay at a very initial stage he is struggling with mathematical project mathematical project like maybe in his research somewhere else he is trying to implement one mathematical project sir at that time he got some problem okay he don't know how to solve that problem he verified so many programming languages for getting solution for that problem sir finally he is not getting any solution that's why he thought that he need to write a small script okay by using his own techniques then he tried and he succeeded okay he tried and then he succeeded in this math project just um, he need some calculations okay he need some calculations so for this he went for some script for this he went for some scripts okay so like this so he developed one small scripting programming language finally he came up with uh, this python sir finally he came up with python so the uh, the name i mean of course so he developed his own math functionalities and finally it has been written as a python programming language that is the reason if you see so where we are using python regularly in the sense you can see in mathematical related things we are going to use python regularly for any mathematical application in fact compulsory they are going to use python that is the reason for analyzing the data okay in the data science applications in the data science applications in the mathematical domains everywhere we are using python okay so remember this the origin for python is nothing but mathematics okay but of course we are not required to learn any mathematics here because everything is predefined libraries okay now sir how this uh, python name came sir there was one famous there was one famous uh, uh, circus is there okay like uh, nowadays you can see in every uh, 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 program we have some kind of comedy shows will be there in every language so okay so like that in the olden days there was one popular comedy show is there so which is a telecasted in the bbc so uh, he this particular gudio van rossum he is so much of interested towards that show so he extracted name from that okay so that's why this uh, name python came from that popular comedy show sir if you, if you are uh, interested towards something we will try to use that names in your real time right in the same way so he has taken that python word from a popular comedy show name sir what is that popular comedy show name is nothing but the complete the complete monty's python flying circus okay the complete monty's python flying circus so from this he extracted the word called python that is the reason but majority of the people are going to feel python means a snake or something like that no so it is came from this popular comedy show but some some people are going to use a logo as a python a snake like that but really this python means it is not a snake please, please keep it in mind and when this particular uh, uh, python released into the market in the sense you can see 21st feb okay 21st feb 1991 is nothing but official official date of birth of python first version of python came into the market so on 21st 1991 okay on 21st 1991 so officially so python has been launched into the market okay and the following the following are the so different versions different versions of python existed what is the first version is nothing but python 1.x so python 2.x and python 3.x like this we have three versions are there of course it is the current version 
current active version sir previous versions are not python based versions sir completely there is a change so the programs which we are writing in 3.x we can't execute in 2.x and then 1.x that means complete scenario is going to be changed okay complete scenario it is going to be changed that's why sir we can't write this python program so from one language to i mean one version to another version so these are outdated and almost deprecated we are not using python 1 python 2 in our regular syllabus so and even projects also we are using python 3.x only so where x indicates sub versions 3.1 is there 3.2 is there 3.10 is there like that we have different versions are there anyway in the next session we are going to see about the installation that process how many versions are there so what is the difference between version to version you know very well just a sample differences will be there that we will discuss okay so next and after that sir finally i i will conclude one one point very very important sir python is very very easy even you people are going to understand why it is very easy okay after completion of the python learning python is not that much difficult sir because you can see in the sample programs itself i have shown how simple it is even to write a big applications also so so many supports are there from different concepts we can build an application in a stable state okay so this is nothing but introduction to python what we have sir application areas application areas of python sir where we are using python where we are using python i told nowadays everywhere we are using python sir the first first application is nothing but mission learning in the mission learning we are using even artificial intelligence you can see everywhere we are using this ai right so uh, in artificial intelligence also we are using so next and after that in the data science the data science applications we are using okay so even in the web applications we are using one second so even in the web applications even in the web applications we are using so next and after that um, desktop application sir i want to manage my income expenditures everything i want to manage my income expenditures everything how you can able to manage if you know a programming language try to develop a small project where you are going to enter every day day to day expenditures and then finally it will print a report at the end of the month so that report consisting of uh, so for which category you have spent which amount everything analysis part you are going to get okay sir can i develop such type of thing yes such type of thing are called as desktop option okay if you have a python yes you can write it sir you can write in other languages also but python is going to give very beautiful code sir very simple instructions you can write okay then even in the distributed domain also we can use distributed applications also we can use a python next and after that in the gaming domain also we can use python even in the data analysis okay etc why not everywhere we are using python these are nothing but some of the applications of python what we have so can you please confirm up to this do you have any doubts up to this do you have any doubts I am good. Right. Right, sir. So, anyway, uh, I am going to start today's session. Uh, remaining things. Tomorrow, we are going to see how you can able to install Python. Okay. Where we can able to install. So, from which website you can download Python. Everything we are going to see step by step. And again, I am repeating. Okay. So, from... Uh, yeah these classes will be from 11 a.m to 12 15 again i am repeating sir because the demos only we are taking at 10 o'clock but actual class is going to start from 11 a.m maybe another two days 
demo classes will be there after that regular class will be there at 11 o'clock 11 to 12 15 we are going to take and these classes is only from monday to friday saturday and sunday there is no class but i told once if i complete the basics then there are certain topics are there like if you see predefined modules i want to explore more on this so for uh, covering this predefined modules and a small mini project we are taking one saturday two hours a session and then file handling database connectivities are there so to deal with again i need one small uh, 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 saturday like that so we are going to spend some additional two hours on this and even for multi threading so except these remaining things will be covered in the regular classes only max you can expect three or four saturdays so sundays anyway there is there won't be any classes as usual things will be there okay so this is nothing but about uh, our uh, plan what we are going to discuss and the fees for this is 5000 you are going to get the videos but these videos are available for you up to seven months seven months you can access okay it is not a downloadable but running notes you are going to get which you can download and you can practice okay right so if you are having any queries you can ask me otherwise you can leave the session from tomorrow as usual even i mean uh 10 o'clock you can start and uh, from tomorrow you won't face any network issue sir from tomorrow everything will be good okay right any doubts